church of God, her walls before me stand, dear as the apple of thine eye, and raven on thy hand, for her my tears shall fall, for her my prayers ascend. cares and toils be given till toils and cares shall end. Beyond my highest joy, I prize her heavenly ways. Her sweet communion solemn vows, her hymns of love and praise. Jesus, the friend divine, our Savior and our King, thy hand from every snare and foe shall great deliver us free. Sure as thy truth shall last, to Zion shall be. Magandang gabi mga kapatid. Muli po tayo ay magsisimula na naman sa ating pangarap po sa Facebook sa gabing ito. Pagsisikapan po natin na magkaroon po tayo ng pangangaral uh, tuwing gabi. Ano po? Hindi po natin nasasabi kung magagawa natin gabi-gabi. Pero pagsisikapan po natin ano po? Sa ating mga kakabsat, may ibang karabi, katakayamin, kakabsat, sa ating pong mga katugangan, Diyos marahay na banggi sa inyong gabos, sa ating mga kaigsoon, maayang gabi sa inyong tanahan, mga kaigsoon, uh, sa mga taga Pangasinan, sa Santos siya labi, at si Kayon, amin. At dyan po sa mga taga Carabawai lang, na dyan po yung nangangal si kapatid na Alfred Esquadra, Mayad ng gabi. At dito po sa amin, sa lupain po ng mga kapampangan na po, may papayin kaya ko nga, uh, kapatad at kakalguran, na makiramdam kaya kaya ng tamang, tamang araw, kaya Facebook, sa ating mga kapatid sa Ibalungan. Good evening, brother. So ito po ang ating uh, pag-aaral sa gabing ito, ay pagpapatuloy lang po natin ang ating pag-aaral sa mga pagmamatwid na ginagamit ng mga kapatid na naniniwala ng lokal na iglesia mula sa kanyang kabangyaman o treasury ay maaaring tumulong sa mga nangangailang mga hindi kapatid. Yan po ang ating pagpapatuloy. We're going to continue to study the arguments used by brethren who believe that the local church may help from its treasury needy non-Christians. So more arguments that they used. That's what I'm. That's what I'm going to study for tonight. Yung po ng ating pag-aralan po sa karong gabi. Sabi ng mga bisaya. The arguments used by brethren who believe that the local church may help needy non-saints. Kagabi, pinag-aralan natin ang Second Corinthians nine verse thirteen at natin na tapos. Ngayon naman, tayo magisimula sa Galatians chapter six verse ten. At iba pa mga talata at magmamatwid na ginagamit po nila. Yun sa Galatians 6 verse 10, Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. Yun po sa New King James. Dito po sa ating wika, kaya tabang may pagkakataon, gawa tayo ng mabuti sa lahat, lalong-lalo na sa mga kasangbaya, lalong-lalo na sa mga kapilang, sa sangbaya, sangbahayan, ng pananampalataya. Ito po ang kailang pagmamatwid. This is the argument. This is a church responsibility since the letter to the Galatians 
was addressed to the churches of Galatia. So ang kailang pagmamatwid, sapagkat ito ay sinulat sa mga iglesia ng mga Galatia, so mga nakalagay sa sulat na ito ay paawang patungkol sa obligasyon ng mga iglesia sa Galatia. Now this is a false argument. Not because a letter is addressed to a church means all its contents pertains to the church's responsibilities. Hindi hindi ibig sabihin na ito ay sulat sa mga sa isang iglesia na lahat ng nilalaman ng sulat na yun ay paong patungkol sa obligasyon ng iglesia. Ito po ay hindi totoo. This is false. This is a false argument. This is a false rule. Especially in non-formal uh, letters. Sa mga business letter, formal, talagang ang nakalagay doon ay pertaining to business matters. But when it is a non-formal personal letter, katulad po ang mga suwag ni Pablo sa mga iglesia, that's, that, that is not true. That all the contents pertain to church responsibilities. The best thing to test this rule is by example. For instance, uh, Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, uh, chapter 4, verses 9 to verse 12. But concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. So ito po, obviously, ito isang individual na responsibilidad. Sapagat ito mo tukoy sa pagmamahal sa kapatid. Wala naman kapatid ng iglesia. Ang may kapatid ay mga kakasyano. Ang kapatid ng kristyano ay kailang mga kapatid. The church do not have brethren. The church doesn't have brethren. Only Christians have brethren. So the first part pertains to brotherly love. So obviously it is a uh, responsibility of a Christian toward his fellow Christian. But concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. We are taught by God to love one another. The Christians should love one another. And indeed, you, you do so toward all the brethren who are in all Macedonia. But we are your brethren, so it's, it's not talking to the church in Thessalonians. It is talking to the brethren that you increase more and more. That you also aspire to lead a quiet life. So this is a very obvious um, line that tells us this is about personal responsibilities, individual responsibilities of Christian. To aspire to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business, and to work with your own hands. So the church is not involved in any form of business. But an individual should work with his own hands. As we commanded you, that you may walk properly toward those who are outside, that you may lack nothing. So this is a good example of a letter written by Paul to the church, at, to the church of the Thessalonians. But these verses are talking about the, the responsibilities of individual Christians. Not talking about church responsibilities. This is not Paul telling the church at Thessalonica of its collective responsibilities. But it's talking about individual responsibilities. To live a quiet life, to practice brotherly love, to mind their own business, to work with their own hands, to work properly to those who are outside. This is talking about individual responsibilities. But this is a letter written to the church of the Thessalonians. So you say, ito po isang magandang halimbawa. Bagamat ito ay sulat sa Iglesia ng Thessalonica, pero ito yung bahaging ito na binasa natin, ay, ang nilalaman ay hindi patungkol sa Iglesia sa Thessalonica, sa kanyang obligasyon bilang isang Iglesia, kundi sa obligasyon ng mga kapatid, na individual na kapatid sa Thessalonica. Muli, ito sa Galatians chapter 6, verse 11 to verse 15. The official or letter to the Galatians was written by Paul to the churches of Galatia. Masayin po natin. Ano po? Dito sa aking Biblia sa Galatian chapter 1. Ito ang ating mababasa. Galatian uh, chapter 1. 
ito yung uh, mababasa natin kung kanyang ito na isula. Ito po ang ating mababasa. Galatians uh, chapter 1. Verse 1. Paul, an apostle, not from men, nor through man, but through Jesus Christ, and God the Father who raised him from the dead, and all the brethren who are with me to the churches of Galatia. So it is a letter to the churches of Galatia. But just because it was written to the church of Galatia doesn't mean that all the contents of the letter refer to the collective responsibilities of the churches of Galatia. Ibig sabihin, hindi ko mo tinaisulat sa mga, sa mga iglesia Galatia ang lahat ang nilalaman ay patungkol sa uh, responsibilidad ng mga iglesia sa Galatia. Masayin po natin. Galatians chapter 6 verse 11 to verse 15. See with what large letters I have written to you with my own hand. As many as desire to make a good showing in the flesh, they should compel you to be circumcised, only that they may not suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For that even those who are circumcised keep the law, but they desire to have you circumcised, that they may boast in your flesh. But God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, by him the world has been crucified to me, and I to the world. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but a new creation. This is a letter to the Church of Galatia. But Galatians 6 verse 11 to verse 15 is talking about circumcision. So this is not even talking about the sisters in the churches of Galatia, but only to the brethren or brothers in the church in Galatia. That some are compelling them to be circumcised. So this is an individual responsibility, whether you be circumcised or not be circumcised. Paul is telling, if you are a Christian, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything. So, this is talking about Christian men in the Church of Galatia being compelled to be circumcised. So, is this talking about church responsibility? Obviously not. The second letter of Paul to the, to the Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10, For even when we are with you, you we commanded you this, commanded the church or the brethren, if, you, if anyone will not work, neither shall he eat. So he's not talking about the church. He's talking about the individual brethren. For we hear that there are some who walk among you in a disorderly manner, not working at all, but are busy bodies. Now those who are such we command and exhort through our Lord Jesus Christ that they may work, they work, they may work in quietness and eat their own bread. Is the church work work? Working quietness and eating its own bread? Or is it the individual brethren? Well, as for your brethren, do not grow weary in doing good. We, which is commanded not to grow weary in doing good? The church or the brethren? The individual brethren. And if anyone doesn't obey our word, this official, is he talking to the church or to the individual brethren? To the individual brethren. Not that person. Paul didn't say not the church. And you're not company with that do not keep company with the church. Paul said, note that person. And do not keep company with him that he may be ashamed. So again, an example of a letter to the church of Thessalonica, but talking about individual responsibility. So you put it all, yeah. Now now Paul K and Glacia and so that they binigas iglesia. Ang, ang nilalaman lahat ay patungkol lahat sa iglesia. Hindi sa ito yun. May mga bagay na patungkol sa mga individual na dapat gawin at di dapat gawin na mga kristyano sa mga iglesia sinulata. Pinakita natin ang mga halimbawa. So yung kailang argument. This is a letter written to the Church of Galatia. So it's talking about the church responsibilities of the churches of Galatia. That is a false argument. Next, the context of the verse. Does the context shows show church responsibility or individual responsibility? 
those who believe that the local church may help needy non-Christians say that the context show church responsibility. Again, we prove it by reading. Pasahin po natin. Pasahin natin mga iso. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any, tres in any trespass, you are spiritual. Is it talking to the church or those brethren who are spiritual? Restore such a one in a quiet spirit of gentleness, considering yourself. That's talking about an individual. Lest you also be tempted. So mga tree, dito ito mo tungkol sa isang individual. Na kailangan niyang papanong balikin ng isang kapatid na nagkakasana kanya. Verse 2. Bear one another's burdens. This is talking about brethren helping one another. And so fulfill the love of Christ. Verse 3. For if anyone thinks himself to be something, is he talking about the church or talking about individuals? Individuals. If anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. That's talking about an individual. Verse 4. But let, it, let each one examine his own work, not the work of the church, but his own individual work. And then he will have rejoicing in himself alone. It's talking about a person rejoicing in himself and not in another. For each one shall bear his own load. Let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. This is an individual responsibility of someone who is taught the gospel to help the one who taught him. Individual responsibility. Verse 7, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man saws, that he will also reap. Is it talking about church sowing or an individual sowing? Individual sowing. For he who sows, sows the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. So the organ is talking about individual doing the, the, the will of the Spirit. Let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season, in due season, we shall reap if we do not lose all. This is not talking about church not weary in good do, doing good, but individual Christians, including Paul, that they should not grow weary in doing good, for in due season, they shall reap if they will not lose all. So that's the context, talking about in different kinds of individual responsibilities. Then the conclusion, therefore, as we, have as we have opportunity, and let's do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. The context clearly shows individual responsibilities, not church responsibilities. Now, verse 10, let us do good, that is us. Is a plural first person. It includes Paul himself. Kasama si Pablo. Question, was Paul a member of any church in Galatia? No. Was Paul an individual? Yes. Was he talking to individuals? Yes. So obviously, this is an individual responsibility, not the church. The money comes from the individuals in helping not from the church. So if this verse is talking about benevolence, this is an example of, or this is an example of a command to do individual benevolence. Not the church doing the benevolence. We do, we do not read the word church from verse 1 to verse 10. So that's the basic salit of church doing. If it is talking about church doing church benevolence. When the church is commanded to do benevolence, the church is mentioned. Pero pag hindi, individual po yan. Yung may makita natin dito. So, individual benevolence is not regarding having fellowship. Like the church doing, helping the Christians, that's because of their, their fellowship in spiritual things. But when an individual helps from his own money, it is not about fellowship. 
but in doing good as an individual. That means an individual Christian may help anyone he desires to help, whether a Christian or a non-Christian, but the Christian should be the priority. Yan ang sinasabi ng talata, ano yun ba? So, this is not talking about Galatians 6 verse 10. It's not talking about church doing benevolence. This is talking about individuals doing good if they have opportunity. Again, those who teach error disregard context. Even if they read from verse 1 to verse 9, talking about individual responsibility, they will still say verse 10 is church benevolence. They disregard the context. So, uh, according to these brethren, when an individual Christian help, this is also church helping. Again, this is a false argument. Hindi totoo yun. Pagka ang individual na Christian tumutulong, hindi ang Christian tumutulong doon. Ang individual ang tumutulong. Let's, say, let's, let's set an example. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 16. Talking about individual benevolence versus church benevolence. If any believing man or woman has widows, let, her, let them relieve them, and do not let the church be burdened, that it may relieve those who are really widows. Kung sino mang babaeng nananampalataya ay may makamag-anak sa mababaeng balo, kanyang tulungan sila upang wag, wag na mabigatan ng iglesia at upang matulungan ng iglesia ang mga tunay na babaeng balo. Sabihin, yung, yung isang sumasampalataya ang kapatid na may mga babaeng balo, silang tutulong doon upang ang iglesia ay matulungan niya yung mga tunay na babaeng balo. So dito natin makikita Individual benevolence is different from church benevolence. See, ang tumutulong dun sa una ang mga individual na kapatid na may mga kinukup-kup na mabay-mabay balo. On the other, yung, yung, kabila, yung, yung kabila naman yung church na tumutulong sa mga tunay na mabay balo. So, the church, the individual helping is not equal to the church helping. Yung magkaiba. Let's go to James chapter 1 verse 27. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. Ang dalisay na relihiyon at tulong-tungi sa harapan ng ating Diyos at ama ito, ang dalawin ng mga ulila at ang mabalo sa kailang kahirapan at panatilihin ang sarili na hindi na dumisan ng sanglimutan. Those who believe that the local church may help needy non-Christians say, say, this is church helping. This is church helping needy orphans and needy, needy widows. So they use this to authorize supporting orphanages and widow wages. That is another false argument. Because what is the context? Was James teaching church responsibility in relieving widows or orphans? Or is it individual responsibility in relieving orphans and widows? This is individual responsibility. Just like Galatians chapter 6 verse 10. We will examine the context. James chapter 1 verse 21. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Be But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. If anyone among you thinks is religious and does not bridle his tongue but deceives his, his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows, in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. What's in that thing? Which is able to save your souls. 
verse 21. Is it talking about the church or individuals to save their own souls? To receive with meekness the implanted word. Individuals receive the word. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves, talking about the church or individuals. Or, 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 we do not obey, do what they hear, but only hearing them and not doing it. If they do that, they deceive themselves, talking about individuals. But for if anyone, that is an individual, is a hearer of the word and not a doer, is like a man, so talking about an individual, observing his natural face in a mirror, for he observes himself, that's not a church, that's a person, goes away and you know, immediately forgets what kind of man he was. James didn't say what kind of church it was, but what kind of man he was. But he that's talking about a person, but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. That's not talking about the church. That's talking about an individual. If anyone. Oh, you see, that's a person. If anyone thinks he's religious and does not bridle his tongue, that does the church have a tongue? Then a person has a tongue. But deceives his own heart. Does the church has a heart? But a person has a heart. This one's religion is useless. The church doesn't have religion. A person is the one who has a religion. Pure and defied religion for God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble. Who is going to visit orphans and widows? Individual Christians, not the church. And to keep oneself, is that the church or an individual? And to keep oneself unspotted from the world. So it is obvious. That James is teaching individuals to be faithful in, the, in that they, only, they not only hear but also do the word. I mean, this is talking about the church, this is talking about individual Christians. So, verse 27 shows this is an individual responsibility, not talking about the church. Again, from James chapter 1, verse 21 to verse 27, we do not read the word church. So how can we say that this is a church responsibility? Niyo ba? Hindi mati mo ba basa yung salitang iglesia mula sa talatang ikadalampot isa hanggang sa ikadalampot pito? Paano natin sasabihin nga ito isang obligasyon ng iglesia? Tulad na sinasabi mga kapatid. So hindi totoo yan. Verse 27, it's not referring to a local church to help a relief needy of orphans and widows, but individual Christians, relieving widows and orphans. Clearly, it shows individual responsibility, not church responsibility. Now, they have an argument that says, doesn't James 1.27 speak of temporary and emergency situations where church treasury money can be used to support unbelieving widows? They, they do this to harmonize it with 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 16, where only believing widows are helped in a, on a long-term long -term basis. So they argue, James 1, 27 is speaking about a temporary and emergency helping of orphan, uh, orphans and widows who are not Christians. That is false, because there is no distinction in James chapter 1, verse 27. By the very definition of orphans and widows, these are long-term and permanent problems. So this is a long-term problem. The only place we find widows helped in a congregational and collective basis is Acts chapter 6. Yet the very first verse, Acts chapter 6 verse 1, proves only Christians were recipients of the help. So Wala, wala man tayo mababasang ganun eh. Na iglis tumulong sa mga babaeng bala na hindi, hindi kristyano o, ba, o mga walang mga magulang orphans na hindi mga kristyano. Wala man tayo mababasang ganun. Ang tayong halimbawa na babasa natin na iglis ay tumulong sa mga babaeng bala sa Acts chapter 6. At ito ay tumulong sa mga kristyano babaeng bala. 
siya ang bagay, mga kapatid. Sa 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 16, verse chapter 5, hindi lahat, hindi lahat ng mabayang balo ay dapat tulungan ng iglesia. Sa 1 Timothy chapter 5, uh, dito po sa uh, verse 9, uh, verse, verse 11, but refuse the younger widows. For when they have begun to grow wanton against Christ, they desire to marry, having condemnation because they have cast off cast off their first faith. Eh, hey, dito, may, meron silang hindi tunutulungan na mga kristyano, bayang balo, o yung iglesia. Baka tapos tutulong tayo sa mga bayang balo, hindi mga kristyano? Tutulong iglesia sa mga bayang balo, hindi kristyano? Ano yun? Para mas mahalaga pa yung mga bayang balo, hindi mga kristyano, kaysa sa mga bayang balo na mga kristyano? The first test in the last They use also this verse, And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love to one another and to all, just as we do to you. Is it talking about the church? It is not talking about the church. Paul was encouraging the brethren in Thessalonica to abound in love to one another. Not talking about the church. Talking about the brethren, individual Christians, to abound in love to one another and to all other Christians, just as we do to you. They say, they argue, a church helping needy now says is an expression of such love that means to abound. Now, who is being considered here? Individuals, not the church. It is the individual who will abound in love, not the church. You know, that's a mean nothing. They say, but helping the church, helping needy non-Christian, is an expression of love. But it is not talking about church expressing love. This is talking about individual brethren increasing and abounding in love. So, hindi mo repeating kami tingin to talang kina just this verse to prove that the church may help needy non-Christians from the church treasure. Now they argue about 1 John chapter 3, 17 to 18. At basahin po natin. We read. We read. Uh, 1 John chapter 3, 17 to 18. But whosoever, basahin natin sa New King James. Ano po? Let us read in the New King James. 1 John chapter 3, 17 to 18. But whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Now they say, the brethren who believes, who believe that the local church may help me denounce from the church treasury, they believe that Called the compassion com, com, commanded toward brother is a demonstration of the love of God. Now the question, is it church prohibited from demonstrating the love of God toward non-Christians? Now this is another false argument. The verse is not talking about the brother helping a non-Christian. This is a brother helping his brother, a Christian. For the sake of argument, if this is talking about church benevolence, this is church benevolence not to needy non-Christians but to needy Christians. So, malina naman, a false argument. But the, the context shows this is an individual who has the world's good, an individual Christian who has the world's goods and see his brother who is in need and doesn't help him. This is what the verse is talking about. This is the compassion of a brother who has this world's good toward his brother who is in need. And he's talking about brethren love, this loving in word and not in deed. So again, this is not an argument towards the local church helping needy non-Christians. Then there is also Ephesians chapter 4 verse 28. Uh, again, we read from the King James, the New King James. 
Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28. Let him who stole still no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have he may have something to give him who has need. Now, honest labor is encouraged by which Christians can practice benevolence toward the needy. This is a Christian benevolence. This is not church benevolence. This is not talking about the church of the treasury helping needy non-Christians. This is talking about a, a Christian who works. So we ha he may have the opportunity to give to those who are in need. But this is not talking about church benevolence. But they argue... Ephesians is addressed to the church of Ephesus in the vein of the saints which are at Ephesus. So because this is written to the church of Ephesus means this is about the church of Ephesus helping needy non-Christians. They, they argue this is a generic command is found in Ephesians 4.28 without reference either as to how it is to be performed or a prohibition of helping non-Christians. In the first place, this is not talking about the church. He's talking about an individual Christian who is working, so may have the opportunity to give help to him who is in need. So he's not talking about church benevolence. Mahirap sa mga ibang mga pinupuresan nila yung mga talata para lang masabi nila, patunayan nila na ito ay iglesia na tumutuo sa mga hindi kapatid. Pero ito sa Ephesians 4.20, obviously, dito tumutuo is a church responsibility. Ito ay tumutungkol sa isang individual na nagtatrabaho para meron siyang maibigay sa isang nangangailangan. Meron ba nabasa ang church doon? Ang tumutulong doon? Wala naman. Generic command daw yun? No, hindi. Ito ay, kung ito ay generic command, ito ay generic, ito ay, if it is a generic command, it is a generic command to an individual to help someone who is in need. Not a generic command to the church. Matthew 5, they use Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 to verse 48. Masahin po natin sa New King James. Matthew chapter 5, of 43 to verse 48. Ito. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Who is going to love, who is commanded to love his neighbor, the church or the individual? But I say to you, love your enemies. It's going to love the enemies, the church or the individual disciples. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. This is not talking about the church. Blessing or cursing or doing good. This is about talking individual <laughs> disciples. Doing good. That you may be sons of your Father in heaven, for he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the, on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even tax collectors do the same. Is he talking about the church or individuals? And if you greet your brother, who is going to greet? The church or the individual? Only what do you do more than the others? Do, do not even the tax collectors do so? Well, she doesn't have it, my friend. The verse 42, they like she name it, you know. And whoever compels you to go one mile, is that the church being compelled to go one mile, or individual disciple compelled to do to go one more one more mile? <coughs> Give to him who asks you, which being asked, the individual or the church, individual. And from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. So if this is talking about church, then the church can lend money. They, they can lend the church treasure to whoever wants to borrow. What proves too much proves nothing. The whole of chapter 5 is not talking about the church. This is talking about the responsibilities of individual disciples in the coming kingdom that will be established by the Lord. Which is verse 20, think verse 27. Chapter 5. You have heard that it was said of those of old, you shall commit adultery. Who is going to commit adultery? Is the, is the church commit, does the church commit adultery? 
is the church married? But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her with her in his heart. Is he talking about the church or talking about individuals? The whole chapter five is talking about individuals. So again, these these verses, Matthew five, verse forty-three to verse forty-eight, are not talking about the church helping the unsaved. Talking about individual responsibility. Sabi nila, they argue, obviously the enemies and neighbor in this context are not limited to brethren. The parable of the Good Samaritan also teaches that one's neighbor is not confined to Christians. Correct. Well, it's not talking about the church, but an individual. They argue, verse 45, explicitly says that God bestows physical blessings on the unjust as well as on the, the just. The context encourages disciples of Christ to extend benevolence toward non-Christians and by so doing, they can imitate God. This is what this is their argument. If either the church or, or Christians do not act benevolently toward non-Christians, then the lost world will see, perceive no difference between itself and the church or Christians. But God wants the world to be able to perceive the difference. If either the church or Christians fail to practice benevolence toward non-Christians, then neither the church nor Christian will be perfect as God is perfect. They, they are adding the word church. We do not read the word church in these verses. But they are adding the word church. So they are adding to the word of God. They are adding to the word of God. This is adding to the word of God. They go beyond what is written. And we do not have to go, we are not to go beyond what is written. We do not read the word church. The whole Matthew chapter 5 you do not read the whole the word church. This is talking about the coming kingdom and the responsibilities and character of the disciples who will comprise the kingdom. So first Corinthians chapter four verse six. We are not to go beyond what is written. Now this things, brethren, I have figuratively transferred to myself and Apollos for your sakes that you may learn in us not to think beyond what is written. That none of you may be puffed up on behalf of one against the other. We are not going to go beyond what, what is written in Matthew chapter 5. We do not read the word church. But they are, they are adding the word church. In their argument. So they are adding to the word of God. <clears throat> they use Matthew chapter 7 verse 12. But therefore all things whatsoever you, you will that men should do to you. Do also do also you do also to them, for this the law and the prophets. Now who's going to do this? Individual or the church? This is the golden rule for individual disciples. Then they argue: Is the church under any obligation to practice what is commonly called gold, golden rule? If so, what what in principle applies regarding work to the Christian applies also to the church. This is their this is their main flaw main error in believing that what the individual may do the church may also do that's false there are certain um, things that the the christian and the church may do but there are certain things that are confined to the individuals and certain things confined just to the church so that the, the, the but they say what the individual can do the church can do but what the church, can, the individual can do, is not true all the time. That's a false argument. Then they make the uh, emotional argument: you are mean and hard-hearted. When the church refused to help needy non-Christian, they say we are mean and hard-hearted. That's the truth. We are not mean and hard-hearted. We just follow what the Lord commands. The Lord authorizes the church only to help needy Christians. So when we refuse to help from the church needy non-Christian, we're not being mean or hard-hearted, but we as individuals may help those people. Galatians chapter 6, verse 10. So when they make this emotional argument, 
they're not trying to make scriptural arguments. When you make an emotional argument, that's not scriptural argument. You're not proving that that is true when you use your emotion to make arguments. So it is not true that we are anti-benevolence, that we are mean and hard-hearted. That is not true because you practice benevolence. The church practices benevolence. They help needy Christians. It's not being mean and hard-hearted. But individuals are not limited to help only needy Christians, but also needy non-Christians. So that is not true that we are being mean and hard-hearted hard, hard -hearted if you limit the helping of the church from the treasury to needy Christians and not helping needy non-Christians. The truth is, we, truth is we do not have scriptural authority for the local church to help needy non-Christians. We just do not have the scriptural authority. So we are not being mean or hard-hearted. So ito po ang mga uh, arguments na ginagamit din ng mga kapatid natin na naniniwala na ang iglesia ay maaaring tumulong sa mga hindi kapatid. So these are other arguments used by the brethren who believe that the local church may help the Dinan Christians aside from the Christians. So saan lang po ito nakatulong sa atin? So ito po ang pagtatapos po lang ating uh, pag-aaral po sa gabing ito. Maraming salamat sa inyong uh, pakikinig, mga kapatid. Oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only lean on Jesus' name.
On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, I anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. His oath is covered and his blood support me in the welling flood, when all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, full blessed to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. There's a call comes ringing o'er the restless waves in the light, in the light, in the light. There are souls to rescue, there are souls to save. Sin the light, 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 the we have heard the Macedonian call today. Send the light, send the light, send the light. Send the light. And the golden offering at the cross we lay. Send the light, send the light, send the light. Send the light, send the light. Send the light. The place of God is called the light. Let it shine from from shore to shore. Send the light, send the light. Let us pray that grace may everywhere abound. Send the light, send the light, send the light. And the Christ like spirit everywhere be found. Send the light, send the light, send the light. Send the light, send the light. Let us not grow weary in the work of love. Send the light, send the light, send the light. Let us gather jewels for a crown of love. Send the light, send the light, send the light. Send the light, send the light, the blessed God's blessed light. Let it shine, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, send the light. Maraming mar maram salamat mga kapatid. Thank you very much, brethren. All Jano Campo, good evening po. May uh, Lenito Trolisa na ibang Arabi, katakayama, ito kapsat. Uh, Ibig sabihin yan, mga, good, good evening, brethren, to everyone. We're first. Gandang gabi po sa lahat. Good evening to all. Medic Kanono, may pabing kaya katamo nga. Good evening to all of us. God said sa mga algama. Good evening, brethren. Gusto po yun. Dito lang ang lalay. Good PM po, mga kapatid. 
Joel Hilario, na imbang nga nabi, kata kay Amin, kakamsat, sabi, magandang gabi sa ating lahat. May talong po rito sa raise time. The habitual actions of the majority of the individuals in an assembly become the collective norms of the assembly. An assembly could help the needy, the needy through individuals' private resources. However, could the house of worship built through the saints' treasury be used as a temporary shelter for those who lost shelter due to calamity? The individual actions of the majority of the individuals in the assembly become the collective norms of the assembly. The collective norm of the assembly is what the Lord commands, not necessarily what the majority of individuals do in an assembly. That because the majority do, do it is the becomes the correct way of doing it. The things that we do in the assembly doesn't come from us. It comes from the Lord. What the Lord commands is what we are going to do in, an, in the assembly. An assembly could help the needy true individuals private to church. We have to clarify. The church or the assembly could help through the contribution given by the, by the individual Christian on the first day of the week. Now, even if individuals will um, have a collection, a collective fund that they collect outside of the first day assembly collection, that is not the church. That, that's individuals, not the church. So even if individuals will collectively do help someone who is needed, that is not the church helping. Though that is individuals through their money is helping, not the church helping. When the church helps, it comes from the church collect, collected church treasury. So we have to clarify. Now, however, could the house of worship built through the saints treasury, not the saints treasury, the church treasury, be used as a temporary shelter for those who lost shelter due to calamity? This is a, um, this is a, uh, what we call a, um, something that may or may not happen. In the 30 or 40 years that I have been with the church in Angeles, this hasn't happened yet. First of all, the church is locked. We locked it. So we don't, we, nobody lives in the church building. So even if there's a calamity, they cannot use the church building as a temporary shelter because nobody is there to open the church building. And before, and for most of the churches of Christ in the Philippines, they have very small church buildings. Now, for the sake of argument, if there's a rain and people will go inside the church building, that's not a problem. That's just an incidental thing. We do not just the church buildings to shelter people in the rain. But if so happened that somebody, even a non-Christian, when, when it rains and he has no umbrella to protect himself or herself, he may allow him to stay at the building until the rain stops. That's not benevolence. So we, that, 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 that's okay if it's a temporary shelter. But we have to re re remind them that after that they have to go to a suitable shelter to help them. Because the government usually have um, evacuation center where the people in calamity could go. So I don't think that will happen. That the church buildings may be used as a temporary shelter during calamities. That has not happened yet. I, I, there are so many calamities of them that have happened in the area, but the church building where we our church building has never been used yet as a temporary shelter. And besides, before we will allow non-Christians for them to, to have temporary shelter, it will be the Christians first. We'll, 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 we may have lost their shelters. So that that's, doesn't prove also that the church, local church, may help the non-Christians. So, uh, even if you allow that for the, for the sake of argument, that still doesn't prove that the church where it's 
treasury may help me denounce saints. Even if that building was built out of the church treasury, allowing people to be inside that building temporarily doesn't make a church benevolence. It's just an incidental thing. We don't just money to help them. We just shelter them in the building. That's not church benevolence. Church benevolence is giving money to help people who are in need. Do not give them money. You just allow them to use the building. That's still not the church benevolence. It will not prove that the church may help me denounce us from the church treasure. This is a false argument by the by those people who believe that the, the local church may help from its church treasure. That if you allow people to drink from the from, from the church fountain, that's church benevolence. No, that's not church benevolence. We're not we don't give any money. We're just allowing them to drink. This, well, this may happen when we have a visitor, which is not a Christian. Who may drink from the church fountain if there is one? That is the church benevolence. So when we build church buildings, we some some building they have church fountain. We do not have church fountain, or they have uh, um, toilets. So when they say if you allow a non-Christian to use the toilet, then you're helping him. Then the church is helping him from the church treasury. False. What money did did the church give to that person who is the toilet? Well, that's a false argument. It will not prove that the local church still may help me be not Christian. po, laging malina po sa ating yan. Magsagutan. So, wala lang po tayong tanong. At tayo po yung Mga banal, muli kami nagpapasalam sa inyo sa gabing ito. Uh, kami po ay pinayagan niyo muli na magkaroon ng pagkakataon sa mga oras na ito na ipangalang yung salita. Sana po ay uh, nakatulong po ang mga bagay na aming pinag-aralan para maliwanagan sa kaisipan ng bawat isa ang obligasyon ng isang iglesia sa mga nangangailangan na ito'y sa mga nangangailangan mga kapatid at ito sa mga nangangailangan hindi mga kapatid. Sana po ito tanggapin namin kapagkat ito ang inyong itinuturo po sa amin ng Diyos. Patawarin niyo kami sa iyong mga pagkakasala at nakibigyan pa, pa rin niyo kami ng pagkakataon sa araw bukas ng karagdagan na natin sa kamaduhan. At ang mga pangit na nangyayang hindi, sa kailan para sa Kristo. Amen. Maraming salamat po. Take care and God bless.